And maybe they're right, but what the hell, I figured I'd bring in a couple of authorities to bolster my view. And so this is complete by accident. I, I like watching Glenn Lowry. I often watch him with uh, John McWhorter. Um, McWhorter, McWhorter. And um, I, I think there, there, there's some of the b better intellectuals out there, certainly on issues of race. Uh, they're very, very strong and, and very, very good about this. So I was watching one of their episodes, and Glenn Lowry goes into this whole description of basically the fear he has, which is exactly aligned with my fear. So I'm going to play you this clip. Um, just to give you some context, uh, Glenn Lowry is describing an interview he did with a long interview, long form interview, which is behind a paywall on Fox with Tucker Carlson. He discuss he's discussing the generally positive experience he had with Tucker Carlson. Uh, I guess John McCorder, uh objected, uh, you know, didn't like the idea that Lowry was going on um, uh, Tucker Carlson's show. He's, uh, John is very, very anti um, tr uh, Tucker and anti Trump as well, but anti Tucker. Um, and um, so that's the context. Uh, uh, Lowry is basically expressing how, how, how positive his experience was to Tucker and the kind of things that they talked about. The things that they talked about. And here is, uh, so this is uh, Glenn Lowry. Let me just get him on screen. Here's Glenn Lowry. This is Glenn Lowry's uh, discussion of this topic that he talked about with uh, Tucker. Oops. Uh, Glenn Lowry, you know, distinguished economist, agrees with me about X, Y, and Z, and therefore I was going to be a prop. And I was prepared. I was prepared to not be a prop by pushing back and saying, oh, but, oh, but, oh, but. Uh, but he didn't do that. He basically interviewed me in a manner more or less the way that Oprah might have interviewed. Whoops, I didn't. It started earlier than I wanted to. Sorry. Uh, let me skip ahead. It's around here. And this is something that I explore with Charles Murray next week as well. The growing possibility of white backlash in an age of identity. You know, the, the uh, possibility that not white supremacists, because they're out there and they, they've already got white identity stuff going on. But what about ordinary Joe and Jane, working class white person who doesn't think of themselves, especially as being white, until you remind them day in and day out with your critical race theory informed uh, uh, arguments that they are white, that they are supremacists, that they are privileged, that they're whatever. And what happens when they start embracing these uh, notions of racial identity with with uh, a zeal, because after all, if we're going to live in a world of racial identities, the largest one of them is going to be white. It, it, I mean, it, it amazes me. So Tucker and I agreed about this. It amazes me that people haven't figured this out. They add up the Chinese and Koreans with the Mexicans and Puerto Ricans, with the Nigerian immigrants with the African-Americans descended from slaves, and they find a number that's bigger than 50% soon enough. And then they declare white people are going to be in a minority. What they haven't figured out is that if white people actually are a race, self-consciously thinking of themselves as a race, they're going to be the largest of the groups by far. Even when they're less than 50%, they're still 45%. Black people are 13% of the population. Latinos are 18% of the population. So do you really want that? And, and we had, Tucker and I, an extended discussion about why you don't really want to encourage a world in which white people come to think. You say they already do. No, no, they don't. They're at the fringes, they do. But uh, ordinary Jane and Joe are not walking around thinking about themselves as I'm a white person. And what are white people's interests and so on? So we had a spirit to, to. So I I completely agree with what he just said. I think that it's absolutely right. I think the biggest fear is that we move further towards tribalism. That we expand the scope of tribalism. Right now, much of the tribalism is being driven by by the left, and much of that is being driven by African Americans on the left. 
But if we expand that tribalism to include whites as a group, as a tribe, the violence, the oppression, the authoritarianism, and, and by the way, some of you think they're the, your allies, these white supremacists, these white tribalists are your allies. But as soon as they're done with whatever is on the left, they'll go after whoever they think is an individualist, whoever doesn't fit. So the real danger is we continue that instead of the response to CRT, instead of the response to the left, being individualism, the sanctity of the individual, the value of the individual, that the response be no, we are whites, we are smarter, we are what, whatever. Right? Whites aren't the smartest. That that be the standard, that the tribalism be the standard. That's the end of freedom in this country. That's the real danger. Luckily in America, you know, we, in particularly over the last 50 years, we've moved away from viewing each other as members of races, right? of races. And um, what CRT is going to push people is to get back to that, is to get back to a view of race, and uh, going back to that view is horrific. I've said often that I don't think race is a thing. It doesn't exist. It is a creation of, uh, of pseudoscientists. It's a creation of racists. And to the extent that we're going to now embrace, or, or, or more and more people in this culture are going to embrace racism, and it'll be caused by the left, um, that is scary. That is truly a scary notion. And that's the, 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 the worst damage, I think, that CRT is going to do. It's going to drive this country further and further towards greater and greater racism, towards greater and greater oppression, towards less and less freedom. And, and, and you're seeing that already. Now, just in case you're like, well, Glenn Lowry, you know, he's black and, you know, we don't, you know, he's, you know, you're on and, and, and Glenn Lowry, they're anti-white, whatever the hell that means. Instead, we want to hear what somebody like, like Charles Murray has to say, you know, Charles Murray is, is, is one of those good guys, right? That some of you, some of you just love. Charles Murray. So let's listen to Charles Murray, all right? Uh, Glenn Lowry's gonna start, and he, he's gonna let Charles riff, and let's see what Charles Murray thinks the real threat is as a result of CRT and a result of all this horror on the left. And you can watch this on YouTube. It's a, it's a, this is a 15 minute segment of the interview. I'm only gonna play a few of the minutes, three or four minutes. That you can watch the whole thing where he, he talks about the left, but but it's interesting to talk about to to watch what he says, what he's going to say in the segment that I've got here. I know for many people Charles Murray is is a massive hero because of his work on IQ that validates for some people this sense of superiority because uh, according to Charles they have because they're part of a group that has higher IQ, they therefore are superior. Um, but uh, Charles Murray is pretty old. <laughs> um, but uh, all right, let's, uh, let's see what Charles has to say. I, I've met Charles, I don't know if you know, but we spoke at the same conference a few years ago. He's a really, really nice guy. So uh, we had a chance to chat. Let me play this one second, let me find it. There we go, press. Play. Without yet another ref. Whoops, why am I again on the wrong timestamp? Um, oh, I switched the two timestamps. Sorry. I put the other video on this timestamp and, and put this timestamp on the one that I meant for the other video. All right, there we go. Now, fixed. Go. Let me see if I'm getting you. 
So there's a threat from the left and there's a threat from the right. You haven't talked about the threat from the right yet. The threat from the left uh, around a kind of relativism that uh, makes racial e racially equal outcomes the god of, of their uh, attention and then uh, looks away from facts and, and kind of anti-rational um, and uh, things like I can't explain differences amongst individuals and their earnings in the labor market by reference to, amongst other things, differences in their cognitive ability, give an example of that. But what is the threat from the right? Uh -huh. I like the way he characterizes, by the way, the threat from the left. It's about equality of outcome. It's about irrationality, the rejection of reason, the rejection of rationality. I mean, Glenn Lowry is really good. If you want to see people fighting the CRT, I mean, really fighting. Uh, watch Glenn Lowry and um, and um, uh, John McWhorter. I mean, they they these guys are really smart and they 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 know the enemy, and they're really fighting him. So he has a good sense of who the enemy on the left actually is. But let's let's get in on um, let's get in on what Charles has to say. That's this is for disaster is looming the closest. And I'm going to give a somewhat different take on it than probably other people have, but... Uh, now notice, this is where disaster is the most, right? This is where it's, this is where it's the worst, right? Where? I'm not really worried about the white supremacists and the white nationalists. I think they're a very small component of the right. I'll tell you who I'm worried about. I'm worried about all of the working class and middle class whites who have had it beaten into their, you know, they, they can't turn on the TV without yet another reference to the fact that they are bad people, that they have a white privilege, that they have been the cause of blacks problems and, and the problems of people of color in general, uh, and that they had better <laughs> their ways or else. And an awful lot of these people are angered by this in a very visceral way. They're saying to themselves, hey, I have black colleagues at work, Latino work co-workers, and, and people in my neighborhood, and I treat them with respect, and I treat them with friendship. I have not behaved as a racist. I am trying to raise my kids and get them through college and make ends meet, and I'm working my ass off. And I sure don't see that I have any white privilege. And so there, I, you will not see an in-depth reporting on this kind of white person by the mainstream media. At least I haven't seen it. That's got to be a big number of people. And now let's, let's, let's get to the specifics here. Blacks constitute 12.7% of the population as of 2020. All right. uh, Latinos are about 18% of the population. And, and let's face it, an awful lot of the energy for the progressive uh, critical race theory is coming from blacks specifically. So now you've got 13% of the population there. Non-Latino whites still constitute 60% of the population. That's way down from 30, 40 years ago, but it's still 60%. What is the proportion of that 60% who are really, really getting pissed? What is the proportion of them who are, and here's where the danger is, but are starting to say to themselves, well, guess what? I'm an identity too. And you want to play identity politics? Okay, we can go with that playbook. And if you get a substantial proportion of whites who not just voted for Donald Trump, you can have voted for Donald Trump for all sorts of reasons that doesn't make you uh, far right. Uh, but no, it's no longer that. It's no longer, it's no longer political in the sense it was before. It's a much more racially grounded uh, fight than it was before. Now, do I know for a fact that you have this phenomenon going on? I can point to indicators. Uh, but how much of that is the result of the last couple of years, and how much of that has been growing because of white? 
uh, middle class and working class anger at, at the elites that goes back to the 1990s. I don't know about that. I'm saying that if whites start to play identity politics, then then basically we're facing some, some, some kind of disaster. I don't know how it's going to play out. All right. Charles Murray. Not me. Not Glenn Lowry. Not some other person you don't know. Charles Murray is saying that disaster is going to come when whites start playing identity politics. That that is the real danger that this country faces. And what can I say? As you know, I agree completely. I've been saying this for years now. This is not new to me. It is truly scary. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals. Uh, and uh, and show your support for all for, for for the work for the value hopefully you're receiving from this, and uh, and of course don't forget if you're not a subscriber even if you even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up you'll know what shows are on when they're on you'll get notified right so um, yes like. Share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.